Welcome to this Easy 11 Plus short lesson about how to find and use the nth term in a sequence. It's something that many people find scary, but they really don't have to. Uh, if you find this video useful, please like and please subscribe to the channel. Uh, the worksheet for today's lesson, as always, is linked in the video description. And remember that you can join me every Tuesday at 6 o'clock for a live interactive 11 Plus lesson. OK, let's get started. So, typical looking question. Here is a sequence of numbers. Now, there are various different ways that you could deal with the problems in this question because it's quite a simple one, but I'm going to use it to demonstrate the nth term method. Uh, you will probably be able to come up with other, perhaps even slightly simpler ways to approach it, but it will set you up well for the next question in this worksheet and many others like it. Here's a sequence of numbers and we need to find the 114th number in this sequence. Oops, here we are. Always something goes wrong. Now, you could, of course, write out all the terms till you find the answer, but it would take you a very long time and it's not practical in an exam. And of course, it isn't what the examiner is testing here. Uh, the examiner in this case being me, of course, because I wrote the question. We know what the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth terms in this sequence are. Let's have a way of describing them. Let's call these numbers of the terms in the sequence, let's call that n, and these are going up of course with a difference of 1 between them. Now let's look down here at these numbers. What do these go up in? So here the difference is 7, and here the difference is 7. I think we know what this is, it's a 7 times table. But let's treat it so we don't know that. We know these are numbers going up in 7. If this sequence goes up in 1, and this goes up in 7, we can see that the second row of numbers is going up 7 times as fast as the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. If this is n, this is going up at a speed of 7 times n. And as of course you know, in maths you don't need to put the times symbol, the multiply symbol, when you say 7 times n, you can just write 7 n. And if we check that, 1 times 7, 7 times n, is in fact 7. 2 times 7 is 14. 3 times 7 is 21, and so on. So the rule that, that connects this row of numbers, n, with this row of numbers, is the expression 7n. Whatever n is, the number in the sequence is 7 times n. So here, for example, n is 5. 7n equals 7 times 5 equals 35. OK, so with that sorted, we're now in a position to answer this question. We know that we're looking for 7n, and we know that n equals 1, 1, 4, where we've got the fifth number in the sequence, n is 5, where we've got the 114th number, n is 114. We want 7n, 7n equals 7 times 1, 1, 4, and that equals, okay, not going to expect you to do that in your head, um, we need to do a quick bit of working out, but hang on, what have we got here? This is where we should be writing our answer to the next stage, and we've got this working out. When you're doing side working out that isn't part of your main row of calculations, stick it well out of the way, for example, uh, over here. Let's have this in, hidden by my exciting head. 1, 1, 4 times 7. I probably made this a bit small. Never mind, we'll survive. 7 times 4 is 28. 7 times 1 is 1, seven, what is it? 7 times 1 is 7, plus 2 is 9, and 7 times 1 is 7. So you've got 798, and that's our answer. So it's dead simple. You find an expression that gives you the main numbers in the sequence, that's 7n, and relates that to the number of the term, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then you use that, you plug the numbers in, and out pops the answer. Now a very typical alternative or follow-up question 
is this. Which term in the, se in the sequence, e.g. the tenth term, would be the number 686? You won't normally see this stuff here, but I've put it in just to make life clear. We know that our expression is 7n, but here we don't know what n is. We just know what the answer is. So we know that 7n equals 686. And remember, 7n means 7 times n. 7 times n equals 686. Well, if 7 times n equals 686, then 1 times n must be a seventh of 686. Even if you aren't good with algebra, just apply your mathematical common sense, which I'm sure you have plenty of. So 7 lots of n is 686. So dividing that by 7, just a reminder here, 1 lot of n must be a seventh of 686. 686 divided by 7, because remember the fraction bar or vinculum means divide by. So 686 divided by 7, again let's get our working well out to the side. 7 times, so what? goodness me, 9 times. What am I doing here folks? What am I doing? Just confusing you and myself uh, with times tables. It's terrible. So the answer is 98. So which term? 98. Or I suppose if we want to write it in this form, we could say, and that means that we've got the list here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. When we get to term 98, it's going to be 6, 8, 6. Right, now let's apply it to a slightly trickier question that's a little bit more like the kind of question that you might actually come across in an exam, where there's just a little bit more of a twist. Here we can see our sequence of numbers. These go up, of course, in ones, they always do. These go up in, what's five to 12? It's seven. Ah, seen that before. These are going up in sevens, yet they don't look anything like these numbers that went up in sevens, because these were 7, 14, and 21. Whereas here we've got 5, 12, 19, and so on. So something a little bit different is happening here. So before we had 7n, this obviously is not 7n. What would 7n be? So 7 times 1 is 7. 7 times 2 is 14. 7 times 3 is 21. 7 times 4 is 28. Can you see the pattern? These here are, are always 2 less than these here. 12 is 2 less than 14. 19 is 2 less than 21. That's like a 1, I don't think I'll do that. 26, 2, 20, and so on. So these are 7n, but take away 2. So here, this row of numbers is in fact 7n minus 2. And it really is as simple as that. The hardest questions of this sort that you will see in an 11 plus exam involve doing this. Spotting that, the differences here are always 7. And saying, right, that means this is a 7n sequence of some kind. And then saying, so what would a 7n sequence without anything else look like? And it would look like this. Then saying, how are these different? Here, they're two, two less, so it's 7n, but take away two. And that's it. That's how you get your expression, which is a way of describing something with numbers and letters, like 7n minus two. That's how you get your expression for the nth term of the sequence. So these numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's say that your number was n. Then in this row, this number would be 7n's minus 2, whatever n might be. 
Now once you've done this stage, you just plug in the numbers, as I said before, and the answers to everything else will pop out. So here we're dealing with 7n minus 2. So 7n minus 2 equals 7 times 29 minus 2. You don't have to put any brackets in because multiplication is always going to happen before subtraction. Remember your bid mass or bod mass or whatever you're told to call it at school. 7 times 29 minus 2. Um, well, there are perfectly good mental arithmetic ways to do 7 times 29, but I'd be a little bit careful with something like this because it's quite easy to make a silly mistake when you're dealing with bid numbers in your head. There is no shame at all in doing a quick multiplication equals 203 minus 2, don't forget that, equals 201. Easy as that. Just be careful with the numbers, don't make silly mistakes. If you've done this right and got 7n minus 2, then the rest falls into place quite easily. Which term in this sequence would be the number 516? So some version of 7n minus 2 is going to equal 516. If 2 less than 7n is 516, then 7n must be 518. Again, no complicated algebra talk, it's just a matter of common sense. And if 7 times n, you don't need to rewrite it like this, I'm just doing it to be clear, 7 times n is 518, then 1 times n must be 7 times smaller. 518 divided by 7. Quickly pop over here. So n equals 74. We're talking about the 74th term. And that means that if I go back to here, that where this is 74, this will be, what was it again? My memory, 516. Easy as that. Right, very, very quick revision. First thing we do is say, in fact, it's a good idea to write in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 above your sequence if that hasn't already been provided to you in the question. Um, and then look at the row of numbers down here and say, what is the consistent gap? And as long as that gap is consistent, which in this kind of question out 11 plus, you can expect it to be almost always, then whatever this number is here, is going to be your number of n. So if that gap is 7, you're dealing with something to do with 7n. If that gap is 5, you're dealing with something to do with 5n. If that gap is 26 squillion, then you're dealing with 26 squillion n. It's really quite straightforward. Then, it's very useful to write in this row here, where you say, OK, I'm dealing with 26 squillion n, no, 7n. So then just write out what that is. So if it's 7n, you write 7, 14, 21, 20. It's the 7 times table. Uh, if it, if uh, the gap was 5, then you'd write 5n here. So you'd have 5, 10, 15, 20. And then the next step is that you compare these numbers to, there's a lot of circling going on here, to these numbers and say, how are they different? And in this case, to get from these numbers to these numbers, we need to minus 2. So our expression for this sequence is 7n take away 2. And then we just use that expression to solve the rest of the question, which is quite simple. And one other thing I just want to drop in again here that I've mentioned already is don't be scared of algebra. Yes, there are some complicated things in algebra that you will encounter in the future that you may already have bumped into. Yes, sometimes you do need to know a bit of theory about algebra, but at no time when I was doing this did I say you need to balance the equation. Uh, did I talk about the order in which things have to be done? I just approached it in simple terms. I said if, if 2 less than 7n is 516, then 7n not 2 less must be 518. And if 7 lots of n is 518, then 1 lot of n must be a seventh part 
of 518. It's just common sense things like that. Apart from that, just keep it neatly lined up with your equal signs all in a row. That makes it easy to do things. And make sure that if you've got any side working like this, that you don't let it get jumbled up in the middle of your algebra, but keep it well out of the way. And if you do those things, then nine times out of 10, you'll get it right. Fantastic. I hope this, is, this was useful. Uh, I'll see you next Tuesday at six o'clock. If you haven't done the worksheet already, have a go now. It's linked in the description. Please like this video if you like it. And if you really like it, please click subscribe because then you'll find out about my other videos and you'll make me very happy. Have a good day.